Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to stream on Facebook Gaming using Stream Elements and OBS. OBS is a software that you use to capture your game and create your scene and then stream directly to Facebook Gaming. Stream Elements is a software that allows you to add widgets, overlays, and things like that onto your screen that will then be sent to Facebook Gaming so that you can have cool alerts and cool little notifications pop up while you're streaming. Today I'm going to show you how to get a basic stream set up and how to connect all these things together so that you are ready to go live on Facebook Gaming. So let's get started. Before we begin, if you have any questions on how to set up your stream or any questions about Facebook Gaming in general, you can always follow me on Facebook Gaming at the link down in the description. Come into the chat while I'm live and hopefully I can help you answer your question and help you get your stream on the right path. All right, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is set up a gaming video creator page on Facebook. It's important that it has to be a gaming video creator or else you will not be able to stream to Facebook gaming. Not gonna go into too many details about how to set up a Facebook gaming page, but I have linked in the description Facebook's instructions on how to get that all set up. One thing I will recommend though, is making sure your Facebook gaming page is completely set up before you start streaming. I know it's gonna be really tempting to get all this set up as fast as possible and start streaming, but it's gonna be super helpful for people to hit that follow button on you if your gaming page is set up. They need to click on your profile and see some pictures, some content, something about you. Seeing all of those things on your Facebook gaming page is going to help motivate them to hit that follow button. So make sure you have your Facebook gaming page set up with some information before you start streaming. Another thing about setting up a Facebook page is that it's going to have to be linked to your personal Facebook page. It's the only way to set up a page on Facebook. Now, after you get all that set up, you're gonna go over to streamelements.com. You're gonna sign into Stream Elements using the Facebook login that you use to create your Facebook gaming video creator page. Now we're going to pick a theme overlay. So what you're gonna do is go over here to this themes gallery. For this tutorial, we're gonna pick a random theme pack to use. They have tons of theme packs for you to choose. These are Valorant specific. These are Hearthstone specific. Personally, I like to go to sort by popularity and pick uh, some of these really basic ones. For this video, we're going to use the gray area super theme. When you hit create, it is gonna give you a preview of what your stream would look like with these overlays. So all you have to do is type in your overlay name and click create my overlay. It's gonna give you this pop-up. You're just gonna go ahead and click see theme in my overlays because we are going to make some changes. We're going to start off with this gray area in game overlay. So go ahead and click edit on that. Now, when you click edit, it's going to bring you to this studio mode. So first thing is let's drag this out of the way and take a look at our game overlay here. We've got social links down here in the bottom left. We have two different cam borders. This is going to be your alert box, which is where um, your followers and likes and stuff like that will pop up right here. And then we've got more information up here, follower, supporter, and tip. For my stream, I like to use the four by three instead of the 16 by nine camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the 16 by nine and make the four by three visible. My camera is going to be over here on the right. So I'm going to move that over here to the right side of the page and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, just like that. Now, if you wanna change any of these social handles, all you have to do is click on the handle you wanna change. It's gonna highlight over here on the left side which text box it is. Then you just go down here to settings and it'll give you the message. And then you just type in your Instagram handle and it'll change it right down there. You can move stuff around by using your mouse However, it does like to be kind of snappy like this when I really want it to be in the middle. So what I like to do is use the arrow keys to move things up and down precisely by a pixel. However, in my opinion, I don't really like the clutter this causes on my screen. So I'm going to delete most of this stuff. The only thing I'm not gonna delete is this top follower over here because it's really the only thing you can get when you're such a new streamer, but I'm going to make it bigger and have it kind of sit on the outside of my webcam border here. So to make your text bigger, you're going to click on the top follower right over here go over to text settings and increase your font size. I'm going to do the same thing with the actual name of the follower. Increase that font size so that it's a little bit readable because you got to think that a lot of people are going to be watching you just on their phones. So it's going to be better if you have the text size a little bit bigger. Now, another thing on this gray in-game overlay is our alert box. So this alert box is where all the notifications are gonna pop up when someone likes your stream, follows you, 
gives you stars, anything like that. Now, as of right now, there's nothing in it, but we can use stream elements to emulate our alert box. So all you have to do is click emulate and choose a follower event and it will pop up right here as a pretend follower. You can see that it popped up here and it changed my top follower to Elena. So now that I've got it kind of the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and click save. It's very important that you always have to hit click save in the top right in order to get it saved. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna download OBS. The version of OBS that I prefer is the one that Stream Elements has modified for their platform, and that is OBS Live. You're gonna click on OBS Live right over here on the left, and it will give you a download prompt for OBS Live. Once you download OBS Live, it's gonna prompt you to sign in. You're just gonna sign in using Facebook just like you did on the Stream Elements website. All right, so now we're gonna move on over here to OBS. I'm gonna show you how to get that set up. So right now I've got a new scene down here and we're gonna start adding some sources. Obviously the first thing you're gonna want is a webcam. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to set up is your webcam. So in order to do that, go ahead and click this plus button, go to video capture device, create a new one and click OK. That's gonna bring up some of these settings here. You're gonna make sure that you have your device selected. I would honestly just leave all of this as default and then click okay. So now we have our webcam in our OBS scene. So next thing we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna add that overlay that we just made in Stream Elements. So if we go back to Stream Elements, we're gonna click on these three dots on the overlay that we edited earlier and click copy URL. We go back to OBS and we're going to use the plus button and go to browser. We're going to create a new browser. We're going to click OK. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the URL that you copied from Stream Elements and paste it right here in the URL. Then you're going to set your width and height to 1920 by 1080 and click OK. Now my overlay has popped up and now I just need to get my camera uh, centered underneath this camera border. Now a tip here is that you can accidentally click randomly and accidentally start dragging your overlay around when you really want it to be in one spot. So a tip here is to go ahead and click this lock button. That makes it to where it's locked in place until you unlock it again and you can't accidentally drag it around. Also, what you're gonna wanna make sure is that your webcam is below your in-game overlay on the sources. What happens is if you have your video capture device above your overlay, then it's going to be on top of your camera border, which is not what you want. You want it below your camera border so that it gives the border a nice clean look on OBS. Now we've got that set up, I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. So now we're going to set up the game capture. Now for the game capture, I've got Legends of Runeterra running here in the background and it's underneath my OBS. So to set up game capture, we're gonna to go to the plus button and we're going to set up game capture. Now there are multiple ways that you can actually capture your game. My preferred method is game capture. What most people think of is actually display capture. Display capture will capture your entire screen no matter what is on it. However, game capture is only going to capture your game. What that means is, is if you're using only one monitor and you wanna switch and check on chat or switch and check on OBS, if you're using display capture, OBS is going to pop up on your stream and everyone will be able to see it. If you're using game capture, it's not going to do that. Game capture is only going to capture your game window. So we're going to set up a new game capture by clicking on game capture creating a new one and clicking OK. Now you're gonna go over here to this mode and you're gonna change it to capture specific window. Then you're going to click the window and you're gonna choose the program of the game you're running. My example is Legends of Runeterra. That's gonna pop up here, right here on this preview and then you're gonna hit OK. Now we've run into that same problem that I mentioned earlier. What you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your game capture is on the bottom of your sources. That way your webcam and your overlay are presented on top of your game like so. Now we're also going to lock game capture it so we don't accidentally move it. Now there are also some settings in OBS that we need to change as well. If you go over here to file and settings, what we're going to do is we're going to go to output and make sure your output mode is switched to advanced instead of simple. For your encoder, I would recommend if you have an NVIDIA graphics card to go ahead and use NVIDIA NVENC. This uses the custom transcoder chip inside your graphics card so you don't have any performance drops while you're gaming. Your bitrate is how fast you're sending data to Facebook gaming. I set my bitrate to 6000 but I also have a pretty fast internet and it's not really that necessary. Recommended bitrate would probably be around 4500. Your bitrate depends on your internet's upload speed, so if you haven't already, I would go over to speed test by Ookla 
Go ahead and give yourself an internet test, see what your maximum upload speed is, and then I would make a decision on your bit rate after that. So now we've got a basic OBS scene set up. We're gonna go ahead and try to stream to Facebook. Now to get to your stream on Facebook, you're gonna go to your Facebook page, go to Creator Studio, you're on the left. Once you enter the Creator Studio, go down to Creator Tools, and it's going to select the live dashboard. The live dashboard is just a dashboard that gives you a bunch of different analytics about your stream in real time. You can set up goals on here that will pop up for any viewers. You can set up your schedule down here um, as far as like when you'll be streaming and you can see your latest comments and things like that. In order to actually go live or even test your broadcast, you're going to want to go right here to the go live button. As of this recording, this test broadcast button doesn't even work. So go ahead and go to go live. Now that we're on the go live page, there's a couple of one time things you need to do in OBS in order to get ready and get started. What we're going to have to do is take our stream key from our Facebook gaming page and put it into OBS. Now, Facebook does things a little bit different compared to other live streaming services. Just like other live streaming services, you'll have a stream key. However, on Facebook, by default, your stream key is only valid for seven days. After those seven days, you'll have to go back and get another stream key. However, you can do the normal thing and go over here to use a persistent stream key. Go ahead and check that box and it'll generate your persistent stream key. This is one that you can copy and paste into OBS and you won't have any problems ever going live. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that stream key back over here in OBS. We're going to go to file settings. We'll go to stream. Make sure your service is set to Facebook live. The server can be default and you're gonna paste that stream key right here. One thing that's different about Facebook gaming is that you can actually start your stream in OBS, but not start your stream live on Facebook at the same time. So what you're gonna do is on OBS, you're gonna go ahead and click start streaming, and it's going to prompt you with this little window right here. If you were to use this bottom function right here, you give your stream a title, description, and game, and immediately go live on Facebook gaming. However, I like to use this top function, and that's what we're gonna do for this tutorial. This lets you view your stream on Facebook before you go live. So go ahead and select like this top one and click go live. And it's going to start your stream on OBS over to Facebook gaming. Now that we're over here on Facebook gaming, you can actually see my stream right here in the bottom right corner coming from OBS. Or if you scroll all the way to the top, you can see it right here as well. One thing I really like about Facebook gaming is that before you start, you can actually check on your stream health to see your upload video bitrate, your frames per second, and your audio bitrate before you even go live. You can use these tools to make sure that your internet is working fine before you go live so you don't run any problems while you're live. To start your stream, you're gonna go over here to the left and choose to share to a page you manage. It's going to be the gaming video creator page that you made earlier. Now there's a difference here between the live video title and your actual description of your stream. The live video title is really only present if someone's scrolling on your actual page and they'll see that there. The gaming description, however, though, is much more important because this is what people will see when they're scrolling their newsfeed. So make sure you take some time and kind of craft what you want your description to be. The live video title doesn't really bear too much weight. Now, as you keep scrolling down, you're going to keep this selected to gaming and you're going to tag the game that you're playing. So mine would be Call of Duty Warzone. You can also choose to upload a thumbnail image for your stream that people will see as they're scrolling on their news feeds. I will say though that thumbnail images don't really pertain very much on Facebook, mostly because as people are scrolling on their timelines, your stream is going to start automatically while they're scrolling. So they're really only gonna see the thumbnail for a half a second or a second maybe. Although that might be because I have good internet, so it kind of just loads instantly. But it's whatever for you. Another option that you have is you can actually publish it as a test broadcast. So by checking this box down here, you can actually stream to Facebook, but it's only going to be visible for your profile page. You can use this to actually post a stream to Facebook that's only visible to you so that you can really make sure that everything is set up really nice. Now, when you're finally ready to go live, you're just gonna click this go live button right here in the bottom corner. When you actually do go live, Right over here on the left is going to be the chat log. And right over here on the right is your stream activity. So anything from likes, shares, stars, supporters, followers, anything like that is going to pop right over here on the right side in chronological order so that you can read it off on stream. All right, guys, so that's pretty much all the basics that you need to know about how to stream to Facebook gaming using stream elements in OBS Live. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. 
comment down in the section what you would like to see about how to get started on Facebook gaming. Remember, if you have any other questions, make sure to follow me on Facebook gaming and come into the chat anytime that I'm live and ask me any questions you have about Facebook gaming or how to get started. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope I catch your stream. Oh, oh, oh. Got him. <laughs>